Hi everyone, so we're gonna be talking about the expand world mod today. Kind of how to get started, what your goals could be when you're using it, you know, some of the really basic and a couple of the advanced things that it can do to start out. It does do a lot of things. So if you're gonna be using the expand world mod at all, I would suggest downloading uh, all of Yere Kusala's mods that he has made for world editing. Uh, if I could pull up all those mods, that would be world edit, server dev, expand world, upgrade world, a structure tweaks, which is a, we'll get to that. That's a different thing. Infinity hammer, which I've already talked about. Ruler is a good thing once, you know, but you can eyeball with most things. Uh, there's also a, a mod called spawner tweaks. This basically changes any object into any other interactable object, a box, uh, an altar, a spawner, anything. It's, it, it, so my point in saying all of this is that if you're going to use expand world and you're going to start making new biomes, you want to make sure that you have all of these mods. Here's what I'm running right now. I also recommend all item stands if you're going to be doing any sort of like dungeon mastering, like laying out stuff. Easy spawner is always good to have for reference. It basically pops up and gives you any prefab you could possibly think of to spawn in the game. I can spawn anything. It has a search field. Troll ragdoll. Woohoo! Plop. Anyway, so you get my drift. X-ray vision I also think is essential. So basically any any object in the game, it will give you its information and you can copy that by pressing H to the clipboard. So if there was like, what's this thing? I don't know what this, oh, it's just deer. So if I wanted to spawn that, I was gonna spawn deer, bam. Anyway, it's just useful for kind of like identifying prefabs uh, on the fly. Plan build actually holds all the blueprints. Right now I've got this blueprint rune that you can build for one stone. As long as you have a list of blueprints that you've downloaded off the internet from places like Nexus Mods, has a lot. Valheimians is also another website that is really great. They've they've collected so many amazing builds. The, the, the build builders over there are top notch. So you download those basically files. They get put into a folder. It, it explains all that to you and you get a whole bunch of blueprints kind of placed down automatically. There's a whole lot more that goes into the plan build mod. For our purposes, we're just going to do like a dwarf statue. I'm a little too close to the thing. So there's a dwarf statue. Somebody built that and then copied the, the blueprint. The mod itself actually has a lot of tools. Again, a lot of these tools overlap with different mods. This has a terrain editing mod option. It also has a really nice deletion tool option, which I like a lot. Radius, you can just expand it or contract it with your mouse wheel. Super easy. Hold down, left, alt, bam, remove that, remove that, done. So expand world though. Let's look at the main options here. We've got minimap size. If you make the world bigger, you're gonna need to make the minimap a little bit bigger and I'll show you what I mean by that. Stretch biomes, this basically makes just the biomes bigger just in size. Um, world edge size, that's just the world edge. It doesn't really need to be modified. Uh, I think that's the area where the waves kind of, they're really rough seas, like constantly rough seas out there depending on my microphone and then world radius which is the size of the of the world um the physical land masses in the world uh altitude delta that's just like adding to the altitude if you want the whole world to be taller uh altitude multiplier that multiplies the altitude distance wiggle so i mean some of these are kind of like self-explanatory locations so it's set to uh, this says one right so we're not one location this is the amount like the percentage that's like pretend that's like a hundred percent the hundred percent of the regular amount of locations if you increase that it's gonna put more locations the houses crypts the troll caves any of that stuff so again all of this stuff is kind of self-explanatory then we get into some of the water things so also let me pre uh, preempt all this i am in solo i am not on a server right now I would suggest that, you know, once you get comfortable with using these files and, and, and uh, from to and from your server, you know, you can take your world file, put it locally, edit, do all the work there, and then upload it to your, um, to your server. That way, you know, it's a lot easier for things to kind of load because all this stuff, all the modifications pretty much reload on the fly, even with a couple commands. Let's show what expanding the world radius would look like. Obviously, I haven't explored the whole map yet, so I can just expose the map. Now we have the whole map available to us. So now we can see any of the terrain changes and biome changes in real time. Let's increase the size to 15,000 and see what happens. Okay, 
So it's increased the overall size. It's kind of gone off the edge here a little bit. What we need to do is expand the minimap because the minimap only goes this far. If I can get out of here, we'll go to the minimap size. We'll go to a 1.5 minimap size. I have to wait for it to reload uh, because every time you change the minimap size, it has to reload the whole map, but we will wait for that to happen. Oh, I haven't explored the map. <laughs> so once you re regenerate the minimap, you have to re-explore the map. I forgot about that part. Okay, so now we've got this world that is uh, one half bigger than it was before. Uh, you can see the distance in the top right corner up there. You know, we're all the way out to, you know, 15, whatever. You can see the land masses just kind of end here. So now what we've done is we've created a bigger world. Now, if we wanted to segment part of this world, it kind of works in slices, pizza pie slices, and it also works in radial distance. Basically, I can affect a portion of an area or by uh, isolating the radius and then the sector this way or I can just take an entire, you know, radius, which I, which I did in my other world with that in my previous video, where you see that there's kind of like an empty ocean surrounding this and then more stuff on the outside. So what? So obviously when you make the world bigger, you know, if you have an existing world and you want to keep that same framework of islands uh, and you do this, it's not going to do that. It's going to just expand it all the way out. Uh, you have to take the numbers and now we're going to look at the file so here are your files in your, uh, you know, if you go to settings, browse profile folder, you know, you go to Bepinex, config again and expand world. And here are your files and the files that we're going to be talking about mostly today are the world files, expand world and expand biomes. So let's take a look at the expand world file. I'll open it in notepad because most people won't have Visual Studio. You should download Visual Studio though. It's free. Uh, if you're going to do any of this kind of stuff, it's really easy. It, 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 it keeps the formatting consistent. Uh, you can kind of isolate errors. You can highlight multiple things at once. It's really useful. Let's take a look at the notepad version. So here we have all of our biomes listed. These are the base biomes that come with the game and here are the settings that are given anything that's not listed here is a default value now that being said let's go take a look at the config options and expand world so here i am i've gone to the expand world thunderstore page i've clicked on documentation and now i'm here in expand world these are the instructions uh they're very complete you can figure out how to do anything here. Here we go, talking about the minimap sizes, even the generation time for the minimap. But let's talk about the biomes and the world. So this is the file for expand underscore world dot YAML. YAML. Sets the biome distribution. This is gonna say, tell the game to put what biome you want in this location. That's all this file is concerned about. We have multiple options here. Biome, obviously that's the name of the biome. Max, these are all pretty self-explanatory, but if we talk about min sector, max sector, uh, start of a circle sector, he's very conveniently made a, uh, a link here to explain what a circle sector is. It's just a pizza pie slice, that's it. Uh, there's math to it, not important for our application but that's what a circle sector is the curve is just the curve is it moves the distance center point away from the world center if you wanted to warp the circle of the world in a, in a different way you know moving the curve the x and the y values around up and down you think about like a rubber band that's in a circle and then you pull in one direction it's going to warp that direction it's kind of what doing the curve values is stretch that's just stretching the amount of biome. So if it, there's a default value of the size of the biome, but if you increase that, it just stretches the, the biome area out in the world. Seed, uh, is, that's just the, the seed number. That's it. Uh, you can override uh, certain values from this in other things. That's not important right now. Uh, water depth multiplier, that's just the negative terrain altitude. 
how much how deep is the ocean basically it's a default value you can increase it that will change things you can experiment with that wiggle distance that's uh just basically applying a certain amount of overlapping wiggle to the distance of the how well you know what the values you put in same thing with the sector these are the values for biomes and world if you look in your file not all these values are here because these are the defaults. So anything that's listed by default is what it's going to give. Once you put in a new value, it's going to change that. So if you wanted to eliminate all the new mislands content, you could just basically take this and press delete and save and gone are the mislands. Anything that where the mislands would be is now overtaken with another biome. So let's just use that as an example. Let's take a look at our map. Here's some mistlands around here. You can see it. Uh, the new biome color, you know, and 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 shape of these islands and stuff like that. Now we're going to delete it. Let's see what happens. I'm going to save, and we it's going to it's going to freeze for a minute because it's doing the generation. And when I can move my mouse again, okay. Now we got to wait for the it says loading up here you can see it up in the top left corner of your screen when this is finished loading we'll get our change in biomes this lands will be gone we'll see something different okay it's done so now you've noticed that oh now there's a whole bunch of black forest and some mountain and stuff like that that's because Whatever is left over is taken up by Black Forest by default. You can change this to whatever you want. You could change it to Swamp, you could change it to whatever. You could change it to your new biome. Now, if we wanted to make a new biome, uh, let's talk about what I have done. I've made, uh, basically within Expand World, you can, any file you say expand underscore whatever you're trying to make another one of, world you're trying to make another biome so you need another world file you say expand underscore world underscore whatever you want dot yaml as long as it's got these regular file structure names in front of it you can do another underscore call it whatever you want the game will load it as if it were in the same file so for expand world because once you load the game you can't just do that you know if i made another file if i uh copied this uh, copy paste now i got a copy of that if i called it uh expand world underscore new stuff dot yaml the next time we loaded the game it would recognize this and i can go into this file oops i can go into this file which open with notepad now we've got the same file here as we did here, except I've deleted the mislands. But if this is the new file, we can just delete all this. And now we can start adding new biomes in. So we could take these entries. Swamp has a lot of entries. So we could just take that, copy it over and call it new biome, right? Uh, so I guess now we need to talk about the biomes file. Uh, so let's open that up. That is the expand underscore biomes YAML. Now we've got these two files open next to each other. Bada bing, bada boom, whoopsie. And so in the biomes file, we have these options here. Options are a little bit similar, but also have a lot of different and important values. Name, here's the name of the biome, meadows. So name, display name required for new biomes. So you have to put a display name in. So under biomes, I always just put name, colon. You can also just copy and paste this if you're unsure. Name, colon. Boom. I'll make sure it's spaced properly. Space, what you want to call it. So new biome. The name is what you're going to see when you enter the biome in the game. The biome is the name, the technical name of the area. So we call this new biome. And we're gonna say, we're gonna call it Wonderland, I guess. The terrain is the 
is basically what the game is going to use to pre-generate the terrain, the physical terrain that you're going to walk on. That's the terrain algorithm required for new biomes. So you need to say what kind of terrain you want. Do you want the mistlands? Let's do, uh, let's do the, let's make it deep north, right? So we'll take the terrain. I'll just copy and paste, control C, malt tabbing over. Oops. Terrain. Now we need to put in the terrain. Okay. Uh, what kind of, what did we say? We wanted it to be deep north, deep north. Copy that. We'll go down, scrolling down to our new biome. Terrain, deep north. Okay, nature, you can, this is a new option that was just added recently. You can input the value for what will grow there. It's very self-explanatory. Determines what plants can grow here. Bees are happy, footsteps, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. Change it to whatever you want. Altitude de delta, increase, decrease the flat terrain value. So if I chose... What did I choose here? I chose deep north, right? If I wanted to make the deep north super tall like the mountains, I could say add terrain delta 10. I'm not gonna make it that much bigger. This is the color value. Here's the maximum altitude, the minimum altitude. This can help you set certain factors. Paint, this will give you the color of, so paint will give you the color of the actual ground. And this can be, this is actually pretty flexible. So if I go down to map color underneath that, it's gonna use the same type of system as that. So if I go paint colon, and then I just copy these values here, right underneath, bam, okay? We're gonna use the same thing. R equals dirt, G equals cultivated, B equals paved, A does nothing. <clears throat> the values from zero to one, using this will lower performance. It does lower it slightly, but not by that much. So let's take a look and just change this to, or 0 0.94, and these will all, we'll all lower these down to one. And we'll see what that does. We've got our new biome. We've put our biome name, <clears throat> the biome title, the name of the biome when you walk into it, and the terrain. Those are the three most important things you have to input when you make a new biome. Now that we've done that, okay, where's our new biome? Right, exactly. We go back to our other file. Expand world. <clears throat> new biome. Look at that. We've already got it right here. Or where are we going to tell it to generate? Well, max distance is six... Uh, min distance is two. We took the swamp variables. So six would be like out here. You know, this is basically the swamp area. Where you see swamp, that's where it will generate. If I wanted to change that, maybe I want to go out a little further. Okay, so we know where swamp ends, right? Uh, let's take a look. Swamp ends right around here. This kind of like radial arc right here. So if that is, if that is six, and we want to start at 6, min distance 6, or 0 0.6. Uh, let's go to max distance uh, 8, right? Amount, uh, that's a very, again, that's a variable, check it out. Amount, right here. Total area, how much of the valid area is filled with this biome? Uh, a lot, we wanted a lot, filled a lot distance uh true we'll keep that true <clears throat> and let's just see what happens so i'm going to just click close it's going to ask me to save i'm going to say save world's going to start to generate right now while that's doing that i'm also going to change to close my expand biomes uh file it's going to ask me to save yes i do it's going to load it again uh the game will freeze you just have to wait it's just doing the work so we'll we'll wait here at the at the map, and I'll be back once it has finished generating our new biome. So let's check our biomes. Oops. Ah, there we go. Now it's generated. Okay. So you can see now here where the areas of of new biome that you've included are. Right here. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, let's go to one of these areas and see what it looks like. Hey, Wonderland. You've made a wonderland. Look at this beautiful paves biome. There's nothing here. Of course there's not. What now, you say? Well, 
now that we're in our new biome, we can start to tweak it a little easier by adjusting some of the settings here. So paint, right? We said that it was all paved, right? So what if we try and four, seven here? And I don't, I forget what these values actually do, but we're just gonna save this file and watch what happens to our terrain here. Again, game will freeze every time you make some of these changes. Just gotta be patient, let it cycle through. Ooh, now we've got a different, a different feel here. Okay, okay. And again, you can you can fiddle with these. All I'm doing is opening and scrolling down to the bottom again, because I so I know I put my new entry there, so I'm scrolling down to the bottom. Let's say I want eight. This and let's say I want a little bit more paved one five, and I'm gonna change this to zero point eight, and we'll just see what that generates for us. Well, let's change the time of day to okay. So yeah, so here is our new biome, Wonderland, right? If I wanted to, I don't like the deep north. I don't like how it is. So uh, deep north isn't what I wanted. I wanted something different. So let's go back to biomes again. And we'll scroll down. Okay, so the terrain is deep north. Ah, I want that mistlands terrain. All right, mistlands, copy, paste. We know mistlands isn't in the game anymore. I removed it and I replaced it with this biome. Well, replaced, I've added this biome in you know, in replacement of it. Ah, so here is our Miss Lands terrain. This is the default generation of Miss Lands terrain. Now you have your new biome looking like the Miss Lands underneath. Where are all the trees and stuff, you may ask? Well, that's because we made a new biome and all of the vegetation, expand vegetation, all of the vegetation entries include a biome check and our biome's not on it. After taking a look at things, I made a couple changes. I moved, I made new files for the biomes, the clutter, the vegetation, and the world files. So as you can see here, they're all, they're all the same files, but they've been added with this little extension, new stuff. Uh, the, the expand world will read that. It just keeps the, the base files intact. If I go to expand biomes, I'm going to start using, I'm going to start using visual studio just to, you know, if just to make it a little bit easier, it's the same text. Uh, it's just formatted slightly differently with the different colors, but I'm going to go forward using this now, just so you're aware. Uh, so for here, I've, I've, you know, we were talking about where's the vegetation, right? So I have added, I've taken a couple entries from the vegetation file here, and this is all the vegetation in the game. And let's say I wanted, uh, let's say I wanted uh, pine trees. So I just type in pine, there's pine tree. Okay. You can do this in the notepad as well. Prefab 01, great. Uh, I'm just gonna highlight and select Control C, that's gonna copy. I'm gonna go back over to my new stuff, vegetation file. I'm just gonna give some space so I know it's easier for me if I separate the entries. You do it however you like. Make sure you can see the line here. Make sure that your prefab is, keep everything formatted correctly. Uh, now I want this in our new biome, right? So I'm gonna put new biome. Now up here, I've done a couple other things. I've added the pickable thistle and the big rock pillars, and I've disabled them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna enable them now. True, true. And we're gonna make these changes, right? Uh, I use control S, that saves it. It says down here, uh, reloading 120 vegetation data. That's how you know it's working. We can just travel to a different location and if we wanted to travel back, just travel back. So here we go. We've got pine trees now. We've got giant thistle. 
Uh, and if you watched my other video, you understand that that's the, the, the way to do that. And I'll show you the file now. So here's the pickable thistle. Here's the scale min scale max setting. So this is the X, Y, Z axis. This is height, width, and length. So let's do one, two, eight, one, three, 15, save. Uh, reloading vegetation data. I know it's changed. I'm gonna teleport back to a different area, right? And I can do this to any of these prefabs. I've did the same thing to these rocks that you find in the, um, the plains, right? So we've got those rocks. That's the Heath Rock pillar. Again, I just, I just went to the expand vegetation file. I highlighted a couple things. Um, you know, you can you can take take anything. We got tr uh, logs. We can in put flies in. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Here we go. Vertical web. This is something that they've removed. But the prefab is still there, I believe. So if we just go in here, right, and paste it into the, our file, right, enable it. True. Uh, let's do two max of ten. Uh, we can obviously change the scale how we want it. Let's make it a little bit smaller and a little bit bigger. And oops, this guy added a little bit on there. Okay, and we're going to push save. It's going to make sure that we're reloading the data. And that's correct because I added an entry. It was at 120 and now it's at 121. And now I'm going to teleport to a different area and let's see if we can find some spider webs. Oh, OK, well, we didn't go far enough, obviously, to, obviously to reload. This is what this is what the thistle has turned into. Uh, I guess I didn't go far enough to reload the data completely. Uh, so that's a little bit weird. Uh, let's go over here see how far we need to go for the I think I need to reload the biome completely which is just again this command down at the bottom the biomes look there they are look at all those spider webs so that is the brief tutorial on how to add vegetation into the game so now we've made a new biome, we've removed the mistlands, and we've got our terrain that we made, custom terrain. Now if we wanted to start adding other things like the clutter, uh, I already did that a little bit and I made a new file for it. So we go to clutter here and we go to the clutter file, the, the main clutter file. We've got our new clutter file here. Uh, let's say we want a bunch of shrubs. I guess some of the shrubs that they have here. We'll just control C copy and control paste here. Again, make sure that you're lined up with your entries. Enabled true. Uh, in for is true. We'll just save. Clutter values actually, um, they will auto um, that you don't need to reload a biome for them to regenerate. I do believe that is the basics of new biome generation and vegetation addition. You make a new biome, you replace a new biome. It's empty. You populate it with stuff. Uh, you can use any prefab you want, and it's very versatile. All you need is that information. So let's say you have uh, another mod and you place a piece, you know, that mod down you want instead of uh, you know, you just want these blue standing torches to just appear everywhere. Well, let's see. Peace ground torch blue. Peace ground torch blue. So if we go into our vegetation folder or our vegetation file, let's say we want it just like the thistle, except it's not pickable. We're just going to place them down in that order. So what do we say? It was we can actually copy this H. Copy clipboard piece, turning stand, and then paste.
and we just get this. He's going to the blue. Do that. Reloading vegetation data. And break this. We will reload our biome. And there should be a whole bunch of torches around. Yep. There they go. <laughs> oh, right. I changed their... Uh... Yeah, I changed the things. So scale min, scale max. Let's get it, that out of here. Uh, two, five. Max altitude is removed because I want it to just be... Drip radius 50. That's good. All right, so we're going to reset that. Ex reloading vegetation data. I'm going to reset the world. And there they are. Now you've got a whole bunch of torches. Everywhere you go in this biome now. Guess what? Blue torches. That's a little in the ground, but... So you can do that with anything. And this is how you can literally create your own worlds. Valheim isn't isn't so much a game anymore with these tools. It's a platform to create the things that you want to creatively um, for your own enjoyment, for other people, uh, there, there's almost no limit because with this mod, this mod and a lot of the other mods that you can, you can basically just kind of like create your own game inside the game. And we're going to get into more of that, but these are the basic tools for expand world. And, uh, I hope this, this helps you get started on your journey to using this mod and some of the other ones. I'm going to show you one more thing before I go. Uh, that's kind of a fun little thing. Uh, you can change the wave height and let's start sailing while we're doing that let's change the wave height and let's see the water level here wave height is 1.5 let's make it two whoa 12 is too much let's say five look at that I mean, nothing really would survive. Everything would flip over. You can see how it's just multiplying the things. Let's go take a look at our boat. Oh, yeah. Boat's getting tossed around. Nobody. <laughs> no. There are no survivors on that one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this content, consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. And uh, have a great rest of your day. See ya.